Hey everyone, my name is Judy and welcome to my channel. So something that you might not know about me is that I do not shampoo. That doesn't mean that I don't wash my hair because I do, it's just that I create my own cleansers. I probably will show you in one of the future videos on YouTube. If you'd like to see that, please comment below. Otherwise, today I'm just going to be talking about my no poo journey. It started around 2012 when I had an outbreak of eczema. At the time, I had removed all of the suspect foods from my diet for at least three months and most of it was gone, but I still had some patches underneath my armpit as well as on the left and right sides of my abdomen. I had started making my own soaps, my own lip balms, my own lotions and potions all made from natural ingredients and anything that I couldn't substitute with I had just tossed up. So for example deodorants I stopped using and perfumes I've limited my exposure to them as much as I could. I do occasionally still like to smell pretty though so I do keep those in my arsenal. Otherwise most of the toxins from my body care routine were removed. The only thing left was my conventional shampoo, although I do admit that it was dollar store brand and I probably could have achieved better results with a higher end brand, I actually started researching about the no poo movement. So all of these people who are not using shampoo were reporting that they had no more dandruff, that their hair was nice, shiny, and silky, and I wanted in. I wanted to get rid of my eczema and I wanted healthy looking hair. So I could just be about the most suggestible person in the world, but I quit shampoo. Now there's one thing about me that you might not know is that I do have very Asian hair, which means that it tends towards greasiness. And if I don't wash it often enough, then I'll look like Severus Snape from Harry Potter, which is not a look that I like. The problem with washing your hair so frequently is that it strips away all the protective oils and sebum from your hair. So that tells your body that it needs to produce more, which means that after I took myself off of the shampoo, my body was still producing excessive amounts of sebum and excessive amounts of oil. Now many people who have tried this method do warn about a transition period where your hair is greasier than normal but eventually it'll sort itself out and regulate in terms of how much oil it produces. I was looking so forward to that day. About two to three weeks into not using any shampoos, the eczema went away completely. Unfortunately for my hair, it looked like it was stuck in the transition period. And we're not talking about weeks or even days, we're talking about months of me trying the no shampoo method and still dealing with greasy hair. I tried many different things including trying to make my own shampoo soap bars. I also tried making soap nut shampoos, but regardless of what I tried, it still felt like my hair was a little bit too greasy for my liking and I was worried that it smelled. There were many days when I would ask friends, family, hey, do I smell? That was followed by, you're telling me the truth, right? And that was followed by, what if I stand really close to you? Do you smell me then? How about if I walk past you really quick? Do you smell me then? And this often went on to me asking, what if I flicked my hair and you were standing really close to me? Do you smell me then? I was getting more and more nervous and paranoid about if I smelled or not and if I was still presentable to society. And once I was given the reassurance by the 20th person, by the 50th person, I kind of relaxed a bit. I mean, people were still my friends and people were still touching my hair, surprisingly. So I did this for about two years. I think that there was only one instance where I used shampoo and nothing happened and I just went back to using water only. At the end of about two years, I started getting a little antsy. I really wanted to use the shampoo. Firstly, my skin cleared up so I didn't worry about that. And secondly, I really missed the smell and freshness of shampooing so I decided to try again. Gradually, the shampoo started making its way back into my life until around 2016. So we're talking about 2012 to 2014, I was off shampoo completely. Then 2014 to 2016, I was shampooing a little bit, not as much as I did before. But what I noticed last year was that there was a lot of hair coming out from my head. So much so that I went to the doctor and I had my thyroid tested. Everything came back normal, thankfully but I was still losing a lot of hair. 
So I changed to a health food store brand shampoo and I even checked its statistics off of EWG's Skin Deep database. This is an amazing resource that shows you a bunch of different beauty care products and how toxic its ingredients are. So for example, you can either type in the ingredient itself or you can type in a brand of shampoo and check to see if it's got lots of toxins or if it's fairly clean. So the shampoo that I chose was fairly clean but it still led to an alarming amount of hair fall. So I did a little bit more research on the no poo method. This time I didn't really want to go back to washing my hair with water only because it didn't feel as clean as I wanted it to. I also didn't want to use the shampoo soap bars or liquid castile on my hair because both of these products are alkaline. So the pH balance was not good for my hair. Although baking soda seemed to work really well for one of my friends, it is also alkaline, which means that it can be super damaging to my hair. And if you do end up reading vlogs or looking at other YouTube videos, a lot of the people who have tried the baking soda method on a long-term basis have reported damaged hair. So I decided not to go with baking soda either. So I decided to try soap nuts again, but this time I wanted to mix it in with other ingredients to see if I could make it work better. One of the things that I added was amla berry, which is super supportive for hair growth, which is why I added it. I also added green French clay, which helps soak up excess oil from my hair. And yes, I do still have a tendency towards oily hair. The clay helps with that. I added aloe vera juice, mostly because I saw it listed as an ingredient on my health food store brand shampoo. It also provides proteins and nutrients, so I thought, eh, what can I lose? Then finally, I follow it up with the rinse of apple cider vinegar. So both the soap nut shampoo and the vinegar are pH balanced. So your hair is slightly acidic and these two products are also slightly acidic. So washing your hair and rinsing your hair with these products are good and nourishing for your head. So here's a final disclaimer. The soap nut shampoo kind of smells a little bit sour like vinegar and the apple cider vinegar obviously smells sour. I find that after I rinse it off with water then it's okay and it doesn't linger around. The second note that I wanted to point out is that because I mix the brownish soap nut shampoo along with these powders like the amla berry and the clay, my final product kind of looks like I'm washing my hair with diluted mud but that was something that I just kind of had to shrug off because it was working for me and it's still working for me. Anyways this has been quite a long video so I'm gonna sum it up here. If you enjoyed watching this video please give me a big thumbs up down below and if you do enjoy watching these stories, tips and tricks about holistic living, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week.